Today is our third performance, and if you like what you see, you can get to see a slightly different cast tonight at 7 p.m., which will be our finale, our final performance this evening. There will be one intermission during the show. It'll be pretty clear. The house lights will go up, and that will be your cue to either sit quietly or quickly take a bathroom break if you need one before returning quietly to your seats. And now, without any further ado, I would like to, on behalf of the 7th and 8th grade, invite you to climb aboard our pirate ship and embark with us on a journey to the coasts of England around 100 years ago as we present to you the Pirates of Penzance. pay them as they deserve. What do you mean? Today, I am out of my indentures, and today, I leave you forever. But this is quite unaccountable. A keener hand at scuttling a canarder, or cutting out the p and never shift the hand fight. Yes, I did my best for you, and why? It was my duty under my indentures. And I am a slave of duty. As a child, I was regularly apprenticed to your band. It was through an error. No matter, the mistake was ours, not yours. And I was in honor bound by it. An error? What error? I may not tell you, for it reflects upon my well-loved Ruth. Nay, dear master, my mind has long been gnawed by a cankering tooth of mystery. Better have it out at once. <laughs> Mistaking my instructions, which within my brain 
Besides, we can offer you but little temptation to remain with us. We don't seem to make piracy. I'm sure I don't know why, but we don't. <laughs> I know why. Nevertheless, I mustn't tell you it wouldn't be right. Why not, my boy? It is only half past eleven, and you are one of us until the clock strikes twelve. True, and until then, you are bound to protect our interests. Here, here, here. here. Well, it is my duty to tell you as a pirate that you are too tender-hearted. For example, you make a point of never attacking a weaker party than yourselves, but when you attack a stronger one, you invariably get thrashed. <laughs> there is some truth in that. Then again, make a point of never molesting an orphan. Of course, we are orphans ourselves, and know what it is. Yes, but it has gotten about. And what is the consequence? Everyone we capture says he's an orphan. <laughs> the last three ships proved to be men entirely by orphans, and so we had to let them go. One would think that Great Britain's whole mercantile navy was recruited solely from her orphan asylum, which we know is not the case. But hang it up, you want to have us absolutely merciless? Ah, that's my difficulty. Until 12 o'clock I would, after 12 I wouldn't. Was ever a man placed in such a delicate situation? And Ruth, your own Ruth, who has won her middle-aged way into your boyish heart. <laughs> what is to become of her? Oh. He will take you with him. Mm. Ruth, I feel some little difficulty about you. It's true, I admire you very much, but I have constantly been at sea since I was eight years old, and yours is the only woman's face I've seen at that time. I think it is a sweet face. It is. Oh, it is. I say I think it is. That is my impression. But as I have never had the opportunity of comparing you with other women, it's possible I, I may just be mistaken. True. What a terrible thing it would be if I were to marry this innocent person to find out she is on the whole plane. Oh, Ruth is very well. Very well indeed. Yes, there are the remains of a fine woman about Ruth. Oh, do you really think so? I do. Huh. Well, then I shall not be so selfish as to take her from you. In justice to her and in consideration for you, sir, I will leave her behind. No, Frederick, this must not be. We are rough men. Rough. To lead a rough life. Rough. But we are not so utterly heartless as to deprive thee of thy love. I think I am right in saying that there is not one here who would rob thee of this inestimable treasure for all the world holds dear. <laughs> not one. No, I thought there wasn't. Keep thy love. Keep thy love. You're very good, I'm sure. Well, it's the top of the tide, and we must be off. Farewell, Frederick, and when your process of extermination begins, let our deaths be as swift and painless as you can conveniently make them. I will, by the love I have for you, I swear it, would that you could render the, this extermination unnecessary by accompanying me back to civilization. No, Frederick, it cannot be. I do not think much of our profession, but contrasted with the respectability, it is comparatively honest. No, Frederick, I shall live and die a pirate king. Oh, better far to 
live and die under the brave black flag I fly then play a sanctimonious part with a pirate head in the pirate heart.
far behind. Oh, he will be here presently. Remember, poor Papa is not as young as we are, and we came over a rather difficult country. Yes, yes. But how thoroughly delightful it is to be so entirely alone! What an awful ability! We are the first human beings who ever set foot on this enchanted island! Except for mermaids. This is a very place for mermaids. Strictly to set foot anywhere. Tails they may, but feet they cannot. <laughs> <laughs> what shall we do to Papa and the servants survive with the luncheon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are quite alone. Yeah, yeah. And the sea is smooth as glass. Yeah, yeah. Suppose we take off our shoes <laughs> and stockings. <laughs> But under these particular circumstances, I feel it is my bounden duty to inform you your proceedings will not be unwitnessed. But who are you, Sir Speed? I am a pirate. Ah! A pirate! Ladies, do not shun me. This evening I renounce my foul profession. And to that end, O oh pure and peerless maiden, O oh blushing buds of ever blooming beauty, I soar at heart, I soar at heart, implore your kind assistance. How pitiful is
safe, we must not lose our senses. Men, 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 Once, but who's out of his indentures today, and who means to live 
let them fight evermore. But wait a bit, I object to the pirates as sons-in-law. And we object to major generals as fathers-in-law. But we waive that point. <laughs> we look over it. <laughs> Ah, an idea. <laughs> and do you mean you would deliberately rob me of these sole remaining props of my old age and leave me to go through the remainder of my life unfriended, unprotected, and alone? Well, yes, that's the idea. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, have you already known what it is to be an orphan? Oh, oh that's it all! Here we are again! <laughs> Liberty, our pirate 
At 11, and before midnight I hope to have atoned for my involuntary associations with these pestilent scourge by sweeping them from the face of the earth. And then, dear Mabel, you will be mine. Aww. Are your devoted followers in hand? <laughs> they are. They only await my orders. Then, Frederick, let your escort lie in
acts of theft and pillage that had a sense of duty, stern dictation are circumstances victim have been guilty. Young Frederick, who calls your late commander. Oh, mad intruder, how dare you face me? Beastly month is February, 28 days as a rule are plenty. One year and every four, his days shall be reckoned as nine and twenty. <laughs> Through some singular coincidence, I shouldn't be surprised if it were owing to the agency of an ill natured fairy. <laughs> you are the victim of this clumsy arrangement, having been born on leap year on the 29th of February. And so, by a simple arithmetical process, you'll easily discover <laughs> all that. Though you've lived 21 years, yes, if we go by birthdays, you are yet only five. My, my comrades. 
I'm afraid you don't appreciate the delicacy of your position. Oh. You were apprenticed to us and until my 21st year. No, until you reach your 21st birthday. And if you're going by birthdays, yours have to be five and a quarter. <laughs> you don't mean to say you were going to hold me to that. No, we merely remind you of the fact and leave the rest to your sense of duty. Your sense of duty? Oh, don't put it on that footing. As I was merciful to you just now, be merciful to me. I implore you not to insist upon a letter of your bond, just as the cup of happiness is at my lips. We insist on nothing. We merely content ourselves to point out you, your duty. Your duty? Well, you have appealed to my sense of duty, and my duty is only too clear. I abhor your infamous calling, and shudder at the thoughts I was ever mixed up with it. But duty is before all. At any price, I must do my duty. Bravely spoken. Come, you're one of us once more. Lead on, I follow. Oh, work. What is the matter? Ought I to tell you? No, I cannot. Speak out, I charge you by that sense of consciousness to which we have never yet appealed in vain. <laughs> General Stanley escaped from you on the plea he was north. He did? Oh, yes, he did. It breaks my heart to betray the honored father of the girl I adore. Break it. <laughs> but as your apprentice, I have no alternative. None. It is my duty to tell you that General Stanley, General Stanley is, he's no orphan. What? And more than that, he never was one. <laughs> Am I to understand that to save his contemptible life, he dared practice on our credulous simplicity? Our revenge shall be swift and terrible. We will go and collect our van a band and attack Tremorden Castle this very night. But stay, not a word, he is doomed. Away, away, my heart's on fire. I've heard this beast exception to repay. This very night, my vengeance dire. Shall what himself be roared away, away. Away, away, ere I expire. I find my duty hard to do today. My heart is filled with vengeance dire. It strikes me to the core, away, away. been made. Mabel, my dear loved one, I bound myself to serve the pirate captain until I reached my one and twentieth birthday. But you are twenty-one. I've just discovered that I was born on leap year and that birthday will not be reached by me.
constabulary duties to be done. To be done. I take one consideration with another. With another. A policeman's lot is not a happy one.
Yeah.